There it is, the United Center. And if you're just waking up after a long summer snooze, let me remind you there's a presidential election going on. And this is a very big week for Vice President Kamala Harris. In just a few days, she will officially accept the Democratic nomination for president here in Chicago on Thursday. And I'm joined now by Anita Dunn, who served as a senior advisor to President Biden before joining the pro-Harris Super PAC Future Forward. Uh, Anita, thank you very much for joining us. Well, thank you for having me this morning, Tony. What a moment this is. You know, we're a country where we pride ourselves on anything being possible, but we've never had a moment like this where a woman of color will officially be nominated by a major party. What can we expect from her speech? Well, I think what you can expect to hear from the vice president this week is going to be a message about moving this country forward, about an opportunity economy where everybody in the country feels they can get ahead, where corporations are held accountable, where people know that they got they have an even shot with the rest of the world. And what you can hear is about moving forward, not moving back, and a clear contrast with what former President Trump and the Republican Party are offering this country. So I think over the four days, you're going to hear a contrast, but you're also going to hear about opportunity and excitement and moving forward. Now, in your roles in the White House, going all the way back to the Obama administration, you're known as both a baker, but also as a brawler. <laughs> Some people have called you the brawler in chief. And in terms of contrast, Republicans are going to try to draw a contrast between the Kamala Harris, who's going to be here this week, and the Kamala Harris, who ran for president back in 2019 into 2020, right? She staked out or flirted with some very liberal positions, a ban on fracking, a ban on single or on private insurance, and there are others. How is she going to explain her evolution on those points? I think if you've watched her campaign over the last three weeks, what you've seen is a candidate who's very clear about where she is now and where she wants to lead the country. And the reality is that, obviously, Donald Trump and the Republican Party are the last people who should be pointing out inconsistencies in policy, since that is where he lives, is saying anything he wants at any given time. The agendas that people need to look at that are important in 2024 are Trump's Project 2025, which is a very radical extremist agenda for this country, and what Vice President Kamala Harris is offering, which is a positive agenda to move forward and also to unify this country, which is what I think people are really looking for. You hear from Democrats a lot the, the effort to paint the 2025 project uh, as extremist. Kamala Harris, Tim Walls have tried to put forward the beginning of a platform of their own that they can be identified with. And there's some economic policy we're finally hearing about, including some price controls on groceries. Notable, I think, that the Washington Post editorial board, not the Wall Street Journal, the Washington Post, is saying that that is a populist gimmick. What do you say to that? You know, since the beginning of the Biden administration, President Biden and his uh, and his economic team have looked closely at the consolidation of grocery suppliers at the fact that you only have two or three which means if you have supply chain problems your price prices go up because there're just not enough suppliers out there i think what she's talking about is an economy where if people are keeping their prices too high for no reason, that they can be investigated. And that is the way things should work in this economy. But she's also talking about making sure that first-time home buyers get a tax credit to help them on that road to wealth accumulation is one of the biggest things in this country, is how do we help younger people kind of get on that road. She's talking about that. She's talking about making prescription drugs more affordable yeah. for everyone, not just seniors. So there's a real contrast here. You know, Anita, there's also a contrast between where the Democratic Party was 29 days ago and where it is today. The, the candidate has changed, and you were among those people who are saying Joe Biden is going to be the guy, he should be the guy. Now we've seen Kamala Harris emerge, and there is a lot of enthusiasm and excitement. Do you now concede that those folks who wanted a change were right? Listen, President Biden made the decision not to be a candidate any longer because he thinks it's too critical this year to defeat Donald Trump, to allow any kind of noise or distraction. And he made the decision to unify the party. And the vice president's unified the party. Where we are today, Tony, is a unified party that is excited, that is energized, that's looking forward, but also recognizes that this is a very tough race and that we have to go out and do the work and win it.
It sounds like in retrospect you do think and acknowledge it was the right decision to make the switch for the party. But I want to get to the, just the delicacy. Uh, to be clear, the president made the decision, and he believes it was the right decision. He believes it was the right yes. decision. So now we're on to the tricky business of honoring his legacy yes. and also celebrating a change uh, at the top of the ticket. So Democrats have to somehow make that transition. How do they do it, and how is Joe Biden doing just as a person? Uh, you know, he wanted to be a two-term president. That's no secret. Yeah. He's not going to be. How's he feeling watching all this joy and celebration by Democrats surrounding Kamala Harris, all this excitement? You know, of all the Democrats out there who want to make sure we defeat Donald Trump and that Kamala Harris is elected president, there's no one who feels that more strongly than Joe Biden. And I think that he looks ahead and he sees his role in this campaign as volunteer in chief. He's ready to do whatever he needs to do, whatever she wants him to do to get her elected. And there's a reason he chose her to be vice president. And I think that he will get an enormous amount of credit in, when the history books are written for making sure that there was a woman and a woman of color in the pipeline so that if there was the opportunity, she would be the logical choice. So there's no one more excited. There's no one more determined hmm. to make sure that Donald Trump is defeated and that Kamala Harris is the next president. Yeah. And I think you'll hear that tonight. Well, I, I'm certain this arena is going to be very noisy when Joe Biden comes out and yes, gives his address. Yes, it will. So, mm -hmm. Anita Dunn, thank you very much. I appreciate it. Thank you for having me, Tony.